yes today's lecture is related to um to tell you frankly it is a mixture because as you know we take one uh, skill per day from yes monday onwards monday is listening tuesday is speaking l s r w tuesday is speaking wednesday is reading and thursday is writing now once again the remaining three days of the week fine friday we take grammar saturday vocabulary and lastly sunday pronunciation okay here we are concentrating on first thing today the skill we'll be concentrating is speaking but it's not actually speaking it is a vocabulary but you cannot segregate grammar and pronunciation from the speaking so we cannot separate only um, vocabulary so it is always better to study it carefully all together we are going to consider fine occupational english test and this is grandmaster class platform or a channel right we are going to deal with the various phases of speaking from the beginning to the last what are the different steps we are going to discuss in detail okay now here we are once again it's just uh see we have some more time for that and then uh, the time still three minutes four minutes left so i'm just waiting for some people so we can start now before that we should analyze what we are going to talk about step by step procedure bear with me today i am going not going to take a lengthy one i am going to break it into two parts so first one is the initiation and second one is the final one so we'll be taking care of that good now okay so if it is that we are going to discuss step by step that is for sure but what are the components that we are going to deal with just take your papers and pencils and be ready with what all are required because i am going to give you a number of things 
So you can follow those things and carefully plan your writing from today onwards. Your style will be totally transformed. Yes. Fine. Two minutes to go. Right. We have five participants as of now because we never bother about how many participants we have. We bother about how interested the candidates who are in the room are. Fine. So that's it. Yeah, one more minute to go. There is Hannah. Two more people. Shainu, George. So. Uh, welcome to you, Iman Sultan. Then you are here, Hannah M. Ahmed. Welcome to you. Then there is Huda Ali. Welcome. And there is iPhone. Um, fine, it's okay. Uh, I don't know the name. I don't remember actually. And next one we have Shebin Shino George. So this is uh, all together, seven participants. Okay. Then, right. Now, we are going to study specifically the vocabulary. How should our approach, our techniques, our methods, our style, our time management, our planning, step-by-step -step analysis, all these things, from greeting to leave-taking in speaking. Okay, right. Now, So that is what we are going to do. Occupational English test. And we are going to do the preparation course. Once again, I tell you, I introduce regarding my course. This is a totally free course. Now, Regarding my training, there are two things. There are two sides of the coin. The first one is the training and the second one is the testing. Training is that one that I'm giving you now. I'll give you how you have to do the methods, the techniques and the approaches, and I'll make you prepared for the exam. Second thing is, the other side is the testing. Testing is that to check yourself whether you are becoming fit for the test or not in the gradual process. So that you will not go and do directly in the exam, you will go in the regular process. So those who want to take the testing, that is a separate thing. So because writing, correction, and uh, speaking evaluation is the tough are the toughest so for that i take a nominal charge but this 
like these lectures are totally free absolutely free right now oet speaking the title or the name i have given to this lecture is power boosters what do you mean by power boosters that means those things which are enhancing your quality fine if you follow these techniques it will be very helpful for you so what you can do is make a notes of what all important things i am explaining and then use them in your regular practice that is what i intend to say <clears throat> great next one you can invite your friends for these classes because if you feel that it is good pass on the information to your friends and colleagues let them also be benefited and that is how i know that my quality is good definitely so what are we supposed to do spread the message that's all that is the only thing that is encouragement for me because this is not related to monetary thing i need some motivation i need some encouragement right now here the purpose of this lecture power boosters i titled today's let, uh, let today's uh, lecture is entitled power boosters so it is not only for speaking but also for writing fine now this lecture is a sincere endeavor to assist the health professionals with the different styles of the speaking subtest what are the various styles of speaking for example let me tell you one thing here there are number of doctors there are number of nurses but do you know one thing there are some doctors who are very famous there are some nurses who are even more famous than the doctors because their approach is a different their style is different and the method they follow up with the patients is different now if you try to understand the technique behind this then it will definitely help you right now here how is it going to help you now the way how you are presenting yourself i mean presentation how you are talking to a person how pleasing your behavior is is there a smile on your lips a dancing so this is what makes you different from the rest now you'll become a special person and you'll occupy 
a place in the heart of the audience or the uh, listener. So it needs some sort of effort from your side. Until and unless you have a change in technique, until and unless you are going to apply these things, it is not going to be any benefit to you. So what you are supposed to do is be pleasant, be gentle, be kind, be generous, be ready to listen, be attentive, be presentable, have a smile dancing on your lips, be eager to support or help the patient, give all your ears to him, don't do multitasking here, all your primary concern is your patient. If the patient is not there, you are not there. Now I tell my students, I am here because of my students. My stomach is full because of my students. My family back home are comfortable because of my students. Because we are for the student community. We are known because of the students. If I don't have students, who will spread my name? Who will talk about my teaching? Who will present my ideas? Who is ready to listen to my opinions? So what? I am not important. My students are very important for me. They are my bread providers. So now this is your attitude towards your patients. This is your style. This is your approach. Now this is called a win-win situation. You are not going to the test like, I want to give a, get, get a good result in the exam. No. Forget that it is an exam. It is not an exam. It is testing your reality. How you are going to present yourself in the realistic situations in an artificial scenario. Though the situation is artificial, though the situation is simulated, try to underline the word simulated, S-I-M-U-L-A-T-E-D. What do you mean by the word simulated? Simulated means programmed in such a way that it appears to be everything true, though it actually is not in reality. So you have to behave as if the other person is your patient and you are the doctor or the nurse or the physiotherapist or the dentist or whatever profession you belong to. Your presentation should be focusing on your patient. Now I give the term facts, F-A-C-T, smallest, facts, facts. So here, focus is number one. Attention, number two. Concentration is number three. Techniques. So here you are using three different techniques. First one is 
the focus on the patient is your fundamental responsibility. When you focus on the patient, you will understand, you will analyze, you will assess what is the patient's condition. Is he stressed? Is he worried? Is he upset? Or is he becoming a pessimist? Or is he an optimist? That means positive or a negative. Is he going on towards the positive side that yes, I will definitely recover? Or is he going into the negative side, the depression, becoming a pessimist? Oh, I cannot improve in my life. So what is this? So now, until and unless you focus on the presentation, on the patient, I mean, his uh, facial features, his voice, everything. Then second one is attention. You have to be attentive to each and every detail the patient is speaking. You have to be attentive. That means ready to listen, make a mental uh, note taking on the mind. You make some notes mentally. Fine. This is what it is. Attention. Whatever it, he's speaking, try to relate to his mental condition and a physical condition and his personality and his style. Try to understand what it is from him so that you can diagnose properly because you are not dealing with an inanimate thing like a chair or a table or a computer. Here is a person who feels. Here is a person who gets offended. Who, here is a person who gets agitated. Now he, all the feelings in the world he can have because he is a human being. If you feel genuinely attached to him, and can construct a relationship with him, you build a strong relationship from him right from the beginning and maintain it throughout the meeting until the ending so that you can give an everlasting impression on the person of the patient. So you create an indelible impression on the patient. So if the patient, you are going to make him happy, don't try to make him happy. Be genuine. Be real. Be trustworthy. Be truthful. Be goal-oriented. Be the right doctor. Be the right patient or a dentist or whatever it is. Be truthful to your profession. I don't know who is there on the other side. I don't know what whether they are listening to me or not. I don't know how many people are there. I don't mind all these things. But one thing I can tell you is, what I am doing is, I can justify that I will do the best from my side. See, for example, there was a scratch on the uh, uh, the screen and this screen is visible to everyone so because somebody is uh, playing with the screen these scratches are coming there see how i am clearing those scratches where uh, people are making on the other side so that means the what i have to do when i'm teaching also i have to concentrate each and everything Yes. Now, selling my goods is not important. Is the goods used for the right purpose? 
then only I should sell. That is what it is. It's very important. You cannot sell, for example, some things which the adults consume. For example, uh, alcohol, you cannot uh, sell to uh, the people who are below 18. So that means uh, to whom you are selling is also important. Sell those things to those people who use it in the right manner. So that is what it is. So here, your patient is very, very special for you. So mind you, now you are supposed, you are, uh, you can say, for example, I am providing services, training services to the people. That means I am a social servant. I am not a professor. I am not a doctor, I am not a uh, lecturer, I am not a teacher, I am not anything else. I am not a guide or a mentor or a uh, counselor to you. I am a servant to my students. They trust me and they come to me, so I should deliver the goods appropriately. At the end of the day, I should keep my hand on my chest and I can say, I have performed my responsibilities up to the mark, to the depth of my heart. So in the same way, if you take this seriously, if you perform, your voice will be different, your tone will be different. Please take care of the screens. Fine. Now here, I, okay, fine. Now, the thing is very important. The patient is very important. If you think that he is very precious for you, your tone will be very soothing, soft, mild, friendly, affectionate, loving, and kind. Right. Now next. Please take care of the screens. Fine. Next one. Now here, the categories. In the speaking part, there are two categories. We can group them into two different aspects. The speaking subtest, it consists of mainly two different sections. What are they see these two sections? Now, first and foremost, it is the warm-up session. Now, warm-up session is in the beginning, right? It will be something about three to four minutes three to four minutes in all. Now in these three to four minutes, you will be discussing some normal things, casual talks, right? You will be discussing some casual talks. Now, he will be asking you regarding various things. So first, he will test you. He will ask you the questions. Who you are? What's your profession? He will check your profession. You'll check your, he will check your name and the ID card, the candidate number and other things. Then afterwards, he will start with role plays. So first one is the warm-up session, which is not assessed. And the next one is the role plays. Fine. Now, the warm-up session. Now, this warm-up session is actually a general 
uh, you can say something like chatting, talking friendly manner, making a relationship. So how to get acquainted with the person so that your fear may be lost. This is just to make you, just to bring you into the comfort zone. So relieve you of your stress so that you can feel free. So here also the same thing. See how in the exam also they are using warm up session like that in the beginning you will with the patient, you should make some relationship building. You will make a warm up session. You will be just greeting and talking personal things in a friendly manner. Right. The candidate answers the general questions normal questions or day-to-day -day questions about their personal background. Where is he from? Um, regarding his family, regarding his studies. Okay, then previous study. So this is professional. First one is personal. Second one is uh, uh, educational. Third one is professional. So there are three different things. The first one, you can notice it. He will be talking about his personal aspects. So his family maybe, his background, the place where he, the location, and the mother tongue he speaks, whatever it is, it's all personal. The next one is the educational, the qualification, whether he is a bachelor's or a master's. Right. Regarding that one, where from he studied, what's the percentage he got, where is he specialized, all these different things he will be discussing. The next one is professional. How long he has been working? What are his experiences? Where, in which department he specialized? And what are his personal experiences? What special uh, situations he faced in his profession? All these things he will be asking. Remember, try to be free and talk as freely as possible because this is what is freeing up your self activity, liberating yourself from your tension and worry. No need to give it an Try to relax. He's trying to befriend you. Right. Next one. Yeah. Then. Three different things. Now, the first one, yes. The first one. Right. Now, the first one is number one, personal. Number two, educational. Number three, professional. So now here, these are the three areas he is going to discuss with you. Or you are going to talk with him. Personal, educational, and professional. Now concentrate these are your stress relievers. Try to take the maximum benefit and come out of your tension, feelings, worries, and whatever you have. Come out of those things. Right. Next one. So, how are you going to make the maximum out of this? Now, let me tell you one thing. Here, first thing is, 
focus on your pronunciation. I'm giving you some additional points. First one is, you have to write, concentrate on your pronunciation. Pronunciation. Right. Concentrate on your pronunciation. Then second one is, fine. In the second part, present your vocabulary. Show that you are extremely proficient in playing with words. How was your, tell me about your uh, education. How was your studies, bachelor's degree? How did you feel about your bachelor's? It was good. Why do you want to use ordinary word good? It was extremely tremendous. It was extremely extraordinary experience. It was an extremely beneficial experience. So what are you are using words? Try to flaunt your vocabulary. Show off your vocabulary. I already told you in my previous lecture, flaunt your vocabulary. When I say flaunt your vocabulary, for example, in a shop, the shopkeeper displays extraordinary dress materials on the mannequins. Yes, the dummy uh, figures of uh, uh, girls and boys mannequins. Now here, why they are displayed? So that customers will be attracted and they'll come pouring into the shop. So when you display your vocabulary, then only the other person can understand that you are highly talented and you have an awesome set of vocabulary. So vocabulary is very important. So the third one is the pronunciation. Number three, these are the various areas. That is what I'm telling you. Pronunciation, sorry, well, pronunciation, vocabulary, and the grammar. Try to use a special sentences. You can say, I studied in a, uh, a city or I studied in a town. I had good experience. I studied in a town. I did not study in a city. I studied in a town, but I had a good experience. So these two sentences, you can join into a bigger sentence and make sentences. So from the beginning itself, you try to create an impression. So until and if in the beginning itself you are afraid and scared, that gives a negative impression. So overcome that. Now, next one. These are the three areas you have to concentrate. Pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. These are the important areas. Fine. Now, apart from that, okay. You have certain other things also which you have to concentrate. Now I'm going to explain what those things are. Now this is, these are the three things which he's going to ask you. And these are the three areas which you are going to concentrate. While answering these three things, you have to concentrate on these things. Now apart from these, 
I am going to tell you something which is more important. Right. Now, natural. Be natural. That means don't try to hide your feelings. If you are happy, make him feel through your expression on the face that you are happy. If you are thinking, let him make uh, an idea that you are thinking. If you are concerned, let him realize from your facial features that you are concerned. So express your feelings. Next one is, don't hide your emotions. I am telling you those things which are more important. Don't control your emotions. If you want to appreciate, appreciate him. If you want to express, say, I am very sorry. For example, he says, um, two years ago, my mother um, succumbed to a cancer. She passed away. You say, sorry to hear that. Feelings should be there. Sorry to hear that. So you have to go ahead with that. Number three. Number three. Yes. So feelings, emotions, and then gestures or expressions, you can say, all in all. Expressions. Right. We present him all the expressions. Don't just be silent. Let him realize that you're speaking from the depth of your heart. So live to the situation. Don't try to act. Be real. As if you are a human being. Don't try to control all these things. Right. You can uh, note down the points which I have written. You can note down the points which I have written. If you feel that they are beneficial. Because I am going to erase those things. And then moving on to the next slide. Fine. The next one. Yes. Here we go. Right. After this one, this one, the next slide. It is talking about the role plays. So there is a transition period. So in this transition period, just, okay, now let us see here role plays. Role plays, the candidate receives a role play card. So this is a role play, yeah. This is the heading repeated. Forgive my mistake. So the candidate receives a role play card in which they receive notes about a patient. Now try to understand this. So for each role play, you have around seven to eight minutes. I have explained this in my speaking lecture. So seven to eight minutes. So two to three minutes, two to three minutes, you will be preparing it's a preparation time or a pre-speaking so you are going to prepare for three minutes then afterwards you are the doctor so you should initiate 
Now here, role plays. Three minutes. Speaking, uh, preparation. And then five minutes. It will be uh, enacting the role play. Yeah, the role play. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. Three minutes. It will be preparation and five minutes it is the execution so three minutes is the preparation for the role play and five minutes is the execution of the role play fine so that is what it is That's it. Now next one. So this is repeated. Okay. Um, now, the candidate receives a role play card in which they receive notes about a patient. Now here there are two different things. There are two different cards. One is the candidate's card and the other one is the patient's card. Yes. And the patient's card will be taken by the interlocutor who is performing the role play with you on the other side of the table. Now you will have the candidate's role uh, uh, doctor's card or nurse's card candidate card we call it and then you are going to prepare he doesn't need to prepare because his duty is only to do these things but still he'll go through the card right next one the candidate then acts out a consultation with the interlocutor or the examiner based on these notes. Fine. Now, now you are supposed to plan and prepare these things. Now, the most important points are coming. If you go in between thinking that these are not important, you'll be losing those things which are more important coming for because you should know the basics first of all okay it is like um cooking before eating right fine you need to take the pains of cooking cutting chopping all these things right now here now what are the things important here the main role should be taken by you he will not tell you to start. Once the time is up, because he is the patient, he will be enacting the role of a patient only. If whatever you say, then he will start. It is your, so now the initiation. Now you say the initiation is from your side. Initiation. First one is, initiation that means you are supposed to initiate the speech now second one is you should elicit the information you should elicit the information from the patient okay now here let us consider one thing here We'll take this as a next step. Here we'll take initiation, initiation of the speech, sorry, initiating the speech or initiation of the speech. And then second one is um, relationship building. 
you should build a relationship there. You should build your trust with the patient. So initiation of the speech. Fine. Next one is, okay, after this, then you have to elicit information. What you want to know from him, because only he can give you how he feels, what problems he's facing, he is the living example. So try to gather information, elicit information so that you can use, the, use it later. Okay, use it later. Elicit information and plan accordingly. Elicit the information and plan accordingly. So, as you sow, so you reap. Now, what all you are taking, those you will give. So, these are the symptoms. And this is your treatment. Fine. Now, let's go to the next part. Now, here, the exam, uh, the interlocutor, is almost always passive. Sometimes he acts, he will act as a real patient. You will feel that he is a real patient. Sometimes he will be upset. He will say, I have been waiting for almost one hour. Where is the doctor? I want to meet him immediately. Now I want to see him. I don't want any nurse, please. Take me to the doctor, you get him here. That is how it is. I am sorry, I don't want to stop this alcohol. Why should I stop this alcohol? Because uh, for so many years I have been uh, drinking, consuming alcohol and no problem for me. Then why do you suggest me to uh, uh, stop taking alcohol? He'll be, he'll be adamant. He will be using strong words. Be ready for all these things. Right? Be ready what he's going to do. You imagine, because he has his card with him. In the card he is written, uh, it is written for him. Don't agree with the nurse. Say that you are not interested to take the medicine. You say you, you insist that you want to see the doctor. Now itself. So, that is how you are going to convince him. Right. So, these are the areas you have to concentrate here. Now, this is regarding the role plays. Fine. Next one. We are going into the next part. Right. Now, here, you can make the notes if you want because I have written it because I'm erasing. I will be erasing that one. Just five seconds and it will be erased. Fine. Right. Then we are going to the Next part. Right. Now the role play, second part. After the first role play, the candidate receives another role play card and uh, the procedure is repeated. So the second role play card. Right. Then again.
it will go on again for five uh, uh sorry three minutes preparation and five minutes uh, execution now what i want to tell you there is last time when i took the speaking lecture monday listening tuesday um, uh, monday listening tuesday speaking okay tuesday i have given a lecture for this one i have explained everything there so what you are supposed to do is you can go and uh, listen to those videos uh, audios or uh, watch those videos and try to gather that information because they are very helpful for you how much time management now time management you have 20 minutes for speaking four minutes for your warm-up three to four minutes then next seven to eight minutes for your first role play so three minutes preparation and five minutes speaking in action execution so five plus three eight minutes then second one five plus three eight minutes so total eight plus eight 16 minutes plus the warm-up that is another four minutes so all together it is 20 minutes this is your game you have to seize the ball and hit the goal let it be straight a free kick or a bicycle kick but goal it should be that is what it is you have to bring the role play into perfection nothing less and nothing more perfection is the operating word see for example when i want to deliver the goods i'll try to prepare to the best of my knowledge as perfect as it can be of course there will be flaws there will be some problems you cannot control everything but still to the level best you should do lot of background work for delivering this lecture i have to prepare almost four hours getting a powerpoint projection all these things so in the same way you are supposed to prepare yourself now next one right now here we are going into the second phase now we are going into the second phase so now i am giving a break for um you say yeah um yes i'm i'm not going out but i'm giving a break so that i can interact with the people yes i want to see if there are any newcomers oh yes now let's see please have patience with me i'm your trainer i'm your friend and a guide or counselor or whatever you feel uh, so i give you many things i don't know where exactly i am falling uh, behind where are my drawbacks are so what i want you are the audience i am on the stage you have to grade me you have to give me suggestions you have to provide me with uh, um, important points. Yes, right. Now let us see here. First one is, uh, let us take, uh, uh, here we have Hana and Ahmad. 
It's my pleasure to listen to you, Hannah. You have one minute and uh, you can speak something. You can give your opinion about the class, the lecture, and where you face difficulty and what more you require. The one minute, the mic is yours. Yes, go ahead, Hannah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so, uh, well, the lecture is uh, it's, um, informative and can, I, I have no idea about the OEP test because uh, I took an ILS test and now the validity of it is done. So now I'm preparing for my OEP test. The thing is that I don't know um, the resources that I need to study for the OEP exam. And, uh, and you just said that there are ADUs uh, that you have made. Where can I find them? Uh, yes. Thank you very much, Hannah. Yes. Now we have another newcomer that is a Priya. Priya. One minute. Hello. One minute is yours, please. Yeah, good evening. My name is Priya. First time I joined in this group. Um, one of my friends suggested me. Uh, it's my first day I join your class. I don't know much. Uh, even I join in between. I just started uh, following you, sir. Right. Thank you and welcome. Right. Uh, next, we have Mr. El Mardi. Mr. El Mardi. Okay. Uh, next, um, Amro Ahmed Muhammad. Yes, please. Amro Ahmed. Hello, sir. I just got in. Uh, I don't know how, if you want feedback about your lectures or. OK, fine. OK. Right. Thank you. You're welcome here. OK, thank you. Yes, we have Akhil Ravi. Mr. Ravi? Yeah, sir, I can hear you, sir. Yes. Okay, fine. Now, um, right, that's good. We have uh, um, attended all the new students, might be. Okay, right. Hisham. Okay. Now, Two people are waiting. Okay, right. Now, next, we are going once again. Right. So that is it. We are getting a recap. This is our uh, channel platform, Grandmaster Class, and we deal with OET, Occupational English Testing. Then we have preparation course, and uh, we are today talking about uh, having a lecture about OET speaking and the present uh, title is Power Boosters. Then next one, we are having a preparation session for warm up. The purpose, yes, all these things we have seen. Now we are going to warm up session, right. Now, the following questions are examples of the types of questions now here, the following questions are the types of examples, right? Of the types of questions which candidates may need to respond in the speaking test. In the speaking test, 
So here it is a mistake, speaking test. Okay, right. Uh, you should think about possible answers to these questions. Rehearse your answers as often as possible. Now let us see here, these are different things. Right. Now first one is, the following questions are examples. Right. Now let us see here, the examples he's telling. Right. He is giving number of examples. And if you practice these examples, uh, in the warm up section, examples, questions, then it, you will have a good experience. Example questions or sample questions. You are going to deal with these two different things. Now, so practice these questions. These are the normal questions, or you can say typo, means typical questions. These are the typical questions which normally will be in the speaking test. Right. Now, candidates may need to respond. That means give answer. Response means answer. So, now you should think about the possible answers. So, don't answer without thinking. There is a saying thing. When some question is asked, there are three steps. When any question is asked, there are three steps which you have to follow. Right. Now, there are three steps which you have to follow. Right. Now, let me tell you here. What are those three things? Number one. First one is listen carefully. This is the first step. People will be interested to answer even before they listen. Very sad. Very sad thing. So they're not ready to listen only. Listen carefully, means listen patiently with all your heart, mind and soul. Only when you listen carefully, then you will get a clear picture of what he is speaking about. It's very essential. So listen carefully. That is the first step. Only if you listen carefully, you can be ready with something. Now, it is like filling in the tank before using the water. So listen carefully. The next one is think wisely. I'm telling you the steps. Think wisely how you can use the information which you have heard. So listen carefully. Then think wisely. And lastly is answer appropriately. Answer appropriately. So these are the steps which you have to follow. So follow these steps. This will help you. Immediately don't be ready to shoot out an answer. Try to be patient enough. Listen to the question in full. Give it a second to think. Then answer. Don't be in a hurry to answer. See, when I am talking to you and giving you a lecture, I am taking some pauses to think how I can present it to you properly. Fine. Now, next one is, think about the possible answers. Now, every question may have different types of answers. So, which is the best appropriate answer? Think about all the possible answers. And then finally, try to give the best possible answer. That is what it means to those particular questions. 
next one this is a very very special word those are dancers dramatists and uh, film heroes and all these people they do some rehearsals before the actual test or show or performance now you also are supposed to do this practice now i am going to every time i give you three three things try to understand they are very important things the first one is preparation number 2 is practice these are called three p's this is what we learned in our bachelor of education and master of education preparation practice and production so you will produce in the real show final show final test this is preparation that means if it is cooking it is cutting grating stage then second one this is yes this is the second stage that is cooking stage and then the last one this is the dining stage or eating stage or consuming stage this is the final stage providing it to your people so i am just giving you an example why i am giving you an example is to make you understand the importance you are all matured people don't take these things lightly that is what i mean to tell you because you are very precious tomorrow if you get an a plus you will tell yes simon sir has given us some good material so present preparation practice and production these are called the three p's right so you can see every time i give three three things right preparation practice and production so practice is important practice practice and practice practice makes a man perfect so what do you mean by this it plays a very operational role now next one is as often as possible make frequent okay now next one is there are other things which you have to concentrate one is fluency and second one is accuracy now what do you mean by fluency i will teach you in the next lecture when we are going into the real class these are preparation stage classes when i go for the real speaking before that one i'll give you so now here fluency means the flow of your speech how is it flowing in a systematic manner yes now fluency may be three different types it may be slow it may be average it may be uh, fast now let us see where are you going where are you going where are you going so three different styles what's your name what is your name what's your name so here all are right but if you say what is your name what is your what's your name what's your name 
it's okay. So how you are pronouncing is very important. That is what is pronunciation. In pronunciation, there are two different things. How is the fluency? Yesterday when I went to the market, I faced a serious problem. Yesterday when I went to the market, there is a comma, just a small pass. Yesterday when I went to the market, yesterday when I went to the market, there is something sing song, sing song, sing song, up and down rhythm. Yesterday when I went to the market, I faced a problem. Full stop, stop there for long. So, where you have to pass, there you have to pass. Where you have to continue, there you have to continue. Practice, practice, practice. You don't need anybody. You are the best person in the world for you. No one can judge you better than any, better than yourself. Take a newspaper and start reading. Read it. Read it until you gain fluency. Word after word. Phrase after phrase, sentence after sentence. Listen to the audio. Catch one word pop, repeat it. After some words, again catch another word and repeat it. After some words, again catch another word and repeat. I'm giving you techniques. I'm reading between the lines. Not everything I can write it on the whiteboard here. So I am telling you, read between the lines. Listen to these audios again. And many things I'll tell you. Try to use them. See, the screen is already full. I cannot write anything more. So now here, it, next time, second day, again play the audio. Now catch two words. Repeat. Imitate. Then again, after one or two sentences, again catch two words and repeat. Again, after two or three sentences, again two words, repeat. Then third day, catch three words. Try to repeat. Why I am asking you to read, reading is natural. And why I am asking you to repeat the audio, I am asking you to listen to the audio or the movie uh, audio. And then I am asking you to repeat because don't listen to ordinary speeches. Listen to native speakers because native speakers are the best examples. For example, number of words we pronounce are wrongly. So almost 75 to 80 percent of the words we pronounce wrongly. So what you have to do is now do it and make it a habit regularly. Automatically you'll get it. Try to repeat the words. Not just listening. Listen and repeat. You can pause and repeat if you want. Two words play, pass, repeat. Two words you play, pass, repeat. Pass, repeat. Pass, repeat. Or else go to the Cambridge Dictionary. Type the word there. It says exam, exam. It doesn't say exam. It says exam, ig, 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 not egg. Exam, example. So try to follow these things and improvise. Okay. Now, now next one is, we are going into the next slide. We are going into the main course. Warm-up session is done. I'm going to give you some examples of warm-up session questions now. Yes? Right. You can, mix, uh, you can write down uh, points. Six points are given. You can write down the six points. Right. Next one.
Yes, I'm giving you some idea, bus. Opening icebreaker. How are you? Isn't it hot or isn't it cold? I just did not, I just kept it like that. For background, where are you from? How are you? Now, this is what it is. Now, let us see here. Now, start with an icebreaker. Now, what do you mean by icebreaker? Icebreaker means releasing something. Who is to talk first? Like that one. You only talk first because you are the leader. For example, there is a problem between a teacher and a student. It is the responsibility of the teacher more than the student. The student does not know that she is doing a mistake or he is doing a mistake. So the teacher has a special role. She knows more than the student. In the same way, the patient has already pain, suffering, stress, tension, worry, agony. So now, how can he come out of all these problems and talk to you in a nice manner? So better you make the start. That is what is breaking the ice. You can ask him, how are you? How are you? How are you? Pronunciation matters the most. Is it, isn't it hot to die? Where are you from? The next, how do you do? How long have you been waiting? Some questions like that. Prepare your own questions. Prepare your own questions. What can I ask? There is no problem. Yes. Now, these are the questions. He may ask you or you can ask him. Next one, professional background. He may ask you like this. Can you tell me a little about can you tell me a little about little, little, don't say little, little. Can you tell me a little about your study or your degree or your professional background? Yes. Can you tell me about your experience? How long have you been working in this profession? Where did you start your first work? How was your first experience in the hospital? Now, professional implications for your decision to come to Australia. Have you investigated your profession since you have come to Australia? Have you checked out the local market in your profession? How does the practice of medicine compare with that of your country? Comparison between Australia and um, your country or Canada and your country or whichever country. Have, do you know what you need to do in order to work in Australia? Can you work in your area of expertise in Australia? You know why this is focusing on Australia? Because Cambridge Boxhill, based at Australia. Right, that's the center. Fine. Now, so regarding that one, they're asking you. Now you want to go to Australia. Have you found out some things which are related to your profession? Okay, why do you want to go to Australia? What are the benefits you will have? So all the, already I'm asking you a number of questions. You can prepare your own things. He may ask you any type of question. Okay, why do you want to migrate to Australia? What can you do to the people of Australia? So what are you planning to work as? after going to Australia, are you uh, interested to start your own establishment 
or do you want to work with a, a hospital? So try to write down your own questions. Mentally prepare. So if you prepare your own questions, then you are mentally ready for any sort of question. That is what I mean to say. Next one. Now professional plans for the future. This is also in the warm-up session, he may ask you. What do you plan to do after you pass the OET? So, what plans do you have for your short-term or long-term future? So here, short-term goals, long-term goals, or short-term plans, long-term plans, or objectives. So you can use, see here, plans, plans, okay, goals, targets, objectives, okay, long-term and short-term. Immediately what you want to do, in the long-term, after 10 years, what you want to do, how you are, uh, um, what is your position after 10 years? Can you imagine? What do you want to be like after 10 years? Right. Next one. Have you any future study or training in your mind? Right. What are your career plans, long-term and short-term? Okay, long-term career aspirations, ambitions. So, where do you see yourself in, see this is the question I was asking you, after 10 years, where do you see yourself in three to five years of time? Okay, most probably I'll be uh, moving to Canada within a year or two. After going there, I will try to settle down in a placement. Then I will try to do some research and I try to grow in my profession and I'll become the boss or the head or the superintendent. And one day, definitely after maybe uh, five years, I don't think so after three years, but even five years, I don't think so. But maybe exactly after seven years, I believe that I can definitely establish my own uh, clinic, at least, if not a hospital, at least a clinic, if not a hospital. See how I am translating the vocabulary, my thoughts into words. Right. That is what it is. Right. Um, good. Now, next one. Now, remember this change is not assessed. Remember, mind you, this stage is not assessed except for some vets, veterinarians who only have experience in tropical medicine rather than with domestic animals. However, it is an opportunity for you to become relaxed before you begin the assessment stage of the speaking test. Okay, forget that. Now, this is your homework task. Yes. Prepare a reasonably detailed biography account. Of your relevant study and work experience. Yes. Prepare a reasonably detailed biography account of your relevant study and work experience. So be ready with all these things. So your account about yourself, your study, and where did you study, and what you felt, and how you felt about your studies, uh, how, how excellently you scored in your exams, what you felt, and what you want to become, why you chose this profession. So all some questions. Try to make some questions, and you can send them to me. And prepare the answers also for these questions. First thing is you send some questions to me. Then afterwards you prepare your own answers and I'll improvise those answers and give you back. Fine. So, 
that is it now regarding the role plays i'm not going to handle the role plays now okay now the whole uh, role plays will consider only the overview the overview of the role plays these steps involved in the consultation or role play right so these things i will be discussing in the later part only this overview i am telling you that's all so i hope you got a clear picture of what is necessary how mentally you have to be ready how you have to present yourself what are the various things that you need to uh, present yourself okay now right that is what it is now i want to ask you some things yes here is dr amar hello dr amar once again nice seeing you here hi how are you fine thank you oh uh, really very nice this is your third time or fourth time right yes this is my third time yeah yeah third time exactly so i really appreciate you okay yeah you you too also okay uh, was this um, speaking uh, did it guide you regarding the necessary aspects yes uh, also today i get a lot of uh, new skills uh, in speaking also uh, i can say that it is also the basic of speaking so uh, your lecture is uh, really uh, rewarded for me because you address the basic of each part i mean you always concentrate and focus on the basic how to write how to speak how to listen how to read and this is the basic things and this is very uh, informative and uh, involve all the information that we need uh, to achieve and pass uh, our exam right thank you very much yeah akil yes yeah, sir yeah i, I you want answer. your uh, feedback can you tell me how it was so uh, till this time i am hearing your uh, lecture it was very awesome i can uh, learn more things from you and i i i am very much sure that if i if i follow your class i definitely pass in oet sir right where are you from akil yeah sir i am from uh, india sir kerala you are from kerala right very nice very nice thank okay. you very much you can pass on the information to your friends and you can yeah, share yeah, the sir, good sir. news with your friends okay yes sir of course sir i will i will share this you this can message, uh, you can send me on a whatsapp so that i can uh, uh, update you regularly uh, thank you sir thank you sir can okay. you please you, send you your have number? my whatsapp number right no no sir no no i don't have okay i will i will send you the whatsapp number i will type you i will type here and okay. uh, you can uh, make a note of it okay yeah, yeah i will do that. Yeah. okay okay thank you thank you sir welcome welcome then there is uh, krish yeah krish hello sir hello yeah. krish hello sir uh, hi sir i am sir krishna from rajasthan india sir okay tell me please mm, sir uh, before time a long time ago sir you added me in whatsapp group and uh, today i sir check uh, uh, this uh, meeting and uh, sir i it is very helpful for me and uh, your lecture is very sufficient knowledge for me sir okay where are you from rajasthan you said right yes sir what is your profession sir my profession is nursing sir okay 
See here, this is my number. I am typing you uh, 9877867360. So that is it. You can, you people can note that down. 9877867360. I sent in personal message to everyone. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Krish. Right. Next one is Rina. Hello, Rina. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. I can hear you. How are you? Fine, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you for the wonderful class. Your uh, lectures are so uh, wonderful. Your teaching, uh, step by step, uh, it's very useful for us to understand the all the modules very easily. So thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Fine. Right. Uh, so that is all for today. We have seen uh, the basics of uh, speaking and uh, we'll go directly into um, the role plays next session in our speaking. Most probably it will be um, this uh, weekend. So Thursday, uh, Friday is grammar. Saturday is uh, vocabulary and then Sunday is pronunciation. So mostly either Saturday or Sunday we'll be having this uh, role plays and I will take uh, one role play each and I will give you live lecture how you have to plan and how you have to prepare. Okay, have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Bye to all. Bye. 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 See you once again. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.